Hi, I'm Dave from Thomas Jacks, and we've got another double header today with Matt from also Thomas, from Thomas Jacks. From Thomas from Jacks. Thomas Jacks. <laughs> yes, brilliant. And uh, we're talking about the Mile 2 series. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about the Mile 207, uh, which is the entry level model at the incredible price of. Three hundred and ninety-nine pounds and ninety-five p and ninety-five p. Um, if you want to find out about the features of the Mile Two series, we'll put a link in the description below and also somewhere up in the top corner, Matt. Somewhere here. Somewhere up there. So you can follow that link if you want to find out about the main features of the product. But now the Mile M two O seven. Yeah. Tell me about the specifics of this particular thermal camera. So. Following on from our previous video, the ergonomics, the shape and the design is consistent throughout the whole range, but being specific about this product, it's all about price. £399.95p, ultimate entry level thermal monocular, various applications it can be used for. And to be honest, it's really impressive. And having gotten hands on, taking it outside, having a good view through it, out in the field and just in sort of controlled environments in and around the office here, um, the image quality that you get from something that's sub four hundred pounds is yeah, it's it's unbelievable actually. I'm I'm actually really surprised. So. Okay. Well, I mean, the reason that the price is so good, yeah, principally is down to the size of the sensor that you get with this unit. So remind us the size of the sensor on this. Yeah. So they're two fifty. It's a two fifty six by one ninety two sensor, sub thirty five millikelvins. Um, just to obviously put this into comparison, the, there have been products on the market previously, but with much smaller sensors, sort right. of 160 by 120 sensors. Um, so the fact that you can get such a larger processor for the same amount of money built in this beautifully sleek, desi uh, sleek design, um, yeah, it's, it's value for money at the end of the day. That's what it is. Okay. Important to mention, this one has got a fixed focus. Is that who would that benefit? Yeah, so obviously fixed focus comes into a lot of these sort of lower spec products or lower cost products. Right. Um, because if it's fixed focus, it doesn't cost as much money to manufacture as it would if it was focusable. Um, because of the sensor and the resolution, the lens size as well, um, you are obviously looking over smaller distances rather, large, rather than larger distances. So you don't necessarily need to be able to focus point. it out at the bigger distances. Yeah. So this is ideal for a wildlife watcher, spotting birds or hedgehogs in the bushes, then perfectly ideal over sort of 50 meters, 100 meters. And the job there is just to find, is there something there yep. that's of the right kind of shape in the right kind of habitat with the right kind of behavior, so movements, you can use all those cues to say, that's gonna be a hedgehog or a fox or a deer or a rat or a bird of some sort. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so you'll be able to identify that at sort of anything sub? Sub 100, really. 100, 100, 100 meters. Look, they'll detect, way, they'll detect a human object way past that, but if we're right. being realistic in a real world application, yeah, there are 100 meters and less right. is, is what they're really designed for. But there are other mile two units that we'll talk about in other videos yeah, correct. that will be better for bigger ranges. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Right, so there's a couple of specifics that apply to this particular configuration with this sensor and this lens, that being the field of view, so how wide that shot is. Yeah. And we're gonna show you some through the lens footage and also the magnification of it. So can you tell us what that is? Yeah, so base magnification is a 1.1 times. Uh, field of view wise, you get about 24 degrees. Um, so quite a large field of view, but that's down to the lens size. Right. Lens being so small, smaller lens allows for bigger field of view. If you looked at maybe some of the other models in this range, yeah. so the 10 mil or the 15 mil, um, you lose field of view, but you you, you gain detection range because you've got gives a gives an idea of range. how much field of view you might typically expect for, so, for a thermal camera. Yeah, so it really depends. I mean, traditionally on the market, what we see is we sort of see between sort of eight degrees and sort of 12 and a half degrees. That, that's quite common. So 24. 24 degrees, yeah. So. Is significant. So if, if part of the job is to need a wide field of view because you've got a big area to scan yeah, or if you're doing a survey, like a back survey, yeah. you can cover a lot of area without needing to move yeah, definitely. the thermal camera, stick it on a tripod, you'll see anything that's going on on the side of a building. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, because it's obviously designed for shorter distances, having a really good field of view is really important. Because if you're only looking over 100 meters, let's say you're looking at a load of rats or a load of rabbits out in the field, you want to be able to scan a large area across a short distance. It's not like you're trying to pinpoint on a 10 meter radius at 300 yards. You're wanting to get as much as you can in with between where you are and 100 meters away. Brilliant, okay, right. 
so that's what it looks like through the lens. Pretty impressive for three hundred ninety-nine. Pounds and 95p. Yeah, correct. Dave. Brilliant. So the M207, we've seen what that can achieve yeah. and the quality of the picture that that gives us. If you wanted to just step up a notch, because we've got eight other models within the range, what would you recommend that people also might want to consider that's in a similar ballpark budget wise? Yeah, so the good thing is, is throughout the whole range, there isn't massive jumps up to go to the next sensor, yeah. which is great. Obviously, I know that you can sometimes get quite sort of big leaps between sensors and lenses and all these kind of things, but they go up quite chronologically, actually. So it's, it's quite nice that it's a nice, simple j jump up. So if you're looking at the budget entry level thermal, you are looking for it because it's on a budget and you're not sure. necessarily needing to spend £5,000 on something to get the most amazing detail. You're right. just looking for something that can spot a heat source. So if you were to go up in the range, you'd, you'd probably stay in the same sensor, but you'd probably choose whether you want to go 15 mil, 10 mil, and then whether you would want the focusable objective lens or right. whether you're happy just to have it fixed focus. Okay. So if it was me and I was jumping up from that to that, I would probably skip the 10 mil um, and I would probably look to go to maybe the 15 mil. And the 10 mil is just too similar to, it's just a, it's just a nudge up. Yeah, it's just- Go a, for something that's actually gonna give you a lot more benefit, a lot more value. Yeah, definitely. Right. So if, you, if you're- So you've got them both here, that's the fixed focus. And that's the manual focus. That's the manual focus, so yeah, that's correct. adjustable. So yeah. what sort of price are we talking now? So that's three nine nine ninety five. Yeah, so uh, the 10 mil would sit in the middle at four nine ninety five, right. uh, and then you go to the 15 mil, which is five seven nine ninety five, uh, so, and then the manual focus, which is six four nine ninety five. Okay, so not a big step not at all. Not a huge jump at all, really. Right, okay. And in terms of the difference that you might that you might see, you're getting a better magnification. Correct, yeah. On both of these. These are gonna be the same to look through the lens with the only difference being one is focusable and yeah, one is fixed focus. Okay. Um, so you lose some of your um, field of view, yeah. but you're gaining in magnification. Yeah, and in detection ranges. So if you're only spotting over, as we said at the beginning, if you're only spotting over 100 metres, you might not necessarily need to spend more money because you're not spotting up such distances or you're not looking for clarity past 150 metres, for example. Um, but if you do want that clarity at bigger distances, if you're not looking at stuff that's only 50 yards or 100 yards away, then, yeah, brilliant. You can have a M215 for 649, which is going to do your job at close range and also at a bit more distance brilliant. as well, without, again, breaking the bank. So that's the M207 Mile 2 from Pixray. If you want to find out more details about it, visit tj-focus.co.uk. And if you want to see separate videos on any other Mile 2, don't forget to subscribe because we'll be posting more videos. I'm Dave at Thomas Jacks. And I'm Matt. Thanks for watching.